Так, здравствуйте, коллеги. Спасибо, что пришли на эту лекцию. Hello and welcome to the lecture. Today I'm going to speak on the end of the bridge. We'll dwell into what static is and what it what is its difference from Fedden. We'll talk on bridges and the difference between them. We'll try and understand what goals and purposes this or that bridge had. Those who are on Captain Bill Robertson's bridge might be interested in knowing what's uh, beyond OT4948 and uh, what Captain Bill Robertson talk, spoke about it. Uh, we'll cover ideal processing and the way it should be. We'll compare various types of processes and the results that people get. And in the end of the lecture, we will talk about how to uh, progress up the bridge as quickly as one can. Any questions so far? If you have any questions, please raise a hand and I will try and answer them quickly. Okay, so this is the first part, bridges in Scientology. I used a quote from Dianetics book one to uh, start this chapter, to start this part of the lecture. Uh, as far as I understand, LRH followed this uh, followed this direction himself and his friend and ally, Captain Bill, expanded on the idea and uh, made it possible for people to get even further than Ron initially planned. Let us look at a dictionary definition of a bridge. Uh, you can see the English definition on the right of your screen. This is one of the first, yeah, this is one of the first charts that was ever developed on this subject. It's partially uh, somehow covered by the picture, but still you can see, you can get the idea. Uh, this is called yeah, written and graduation chart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a date there, 25th of September, uh, 65. It's one of the first versions of the bridge. Yeah, this is the bridge to the new world. And unfortunately we can't see the date on it. And now that's the bridge to total freedom. Uh, as you can see, the idea of what a person can achieve on the bridge uh, varied with time. To the left is the, is the bridge to total freedom, which is delivered in Ron's dorks. To the right is the bridge uh, painted or drawn by Captain Bill himself. Uh, it's up to OT40, but uh, it was soon developed up to OT48. When we can read, uh, when we read uh, the descriptions of bridges, we can see the two main ideas that define a bridge. That is a bridge to a better life and bridge to total freedom. So these are the two goals uh, put there by the creator of the bridge that we can achieve. Bridge to better life. As you can see uh, in the picture, and it's actually taken from Ron's article, uh, there is somehow a worse, not the worst, but the worst part of life. And uh, a person can move from there to live a better life, which is uh, an improved uh, and more successful version. Uh, the uh, idea of a better life is taken from religion and uh, it's um, suggested that using a religion or using certain rules of life, a person can uh, achieve a better life. Uh, for example, in, in Christianity, if a person um, follows all the rules and all the dogmas, uh, he or she may eventually wind up in paradise. Now let's have a look uh, at the total freedom. It's one of, it's the other goal of the bridge. By definition, total freedom is existence without barriers. But is it actually possible to be in this state? We know that absolutes uh, are not achievable. There are certain things in life that we can't withdraw from or those that we can dismiss. And so uh, it's actually impossible to live life without barriers. But as a person progresses on the bridge, he or she um, erases certain barriers in his or her mind. One improves their life, uh, lives and um, erases or makes disappear certain barriers in physical universe. And as we progress even further on the bridge, we uh, get rid of uh, spiritual barriers and we become bigger as spiritual beings. 
let us look at the bridges that are available for sale at the moment. The second one is what's called LRH bridge in free zone. It includes processes up to OT7, including NATS and OT8. The next bridge that is available for sale and that we can actually use and progress on is uh, Captain Bill's bridge to up to OT16. I put a special emphasis on that because there is an idea circulating among the public, among certain public, that uh, the uh, actual bridge is up to OT16 and what's beyond that, which is farther than that, uh, that is just the imagination of Captain Bill and some, some ideas of his. As a person who completed OT48, I'm very, I'm very surprised and shocked when I hear ideas like that. Just imagine that you are at an, at an official reception and you're finished with all the main courses and you get uh, a marvelous cake with fruit and cream and whipped cream and all stuff like that for dessert. And you say, oh no, sorry, I I'm full, I'm not going to eat it. And so I think that the people who say uh, things like that, they are kind of trying to dismiss the most delicious food they have ever tried in their life. So um, I think, uh, to my mind, uh, the levels beyond OT17 are the most effective and the, the best ones that I ever had. Number five is the bridge to OT48. Oh, number, number four, four, sorry. Yeah, number four. This is where one um, sorts out many, many games and um, yeah, and improves. Uh, this is where the person improves the uh, relationship with his or her body. The separate bridge is the bridge of the 50s, which is the uh, developments of Ron made in the 50s. Uh, this bridge includes uh, various processes regarding exteriorization, power processes, creative processing, um, processes described in PDC and uh, lectures in Phoenix. This bridge is really interesting. Let's have a look at it. Let's say you're a Thetan and you get into a body. And being in a body is a really interesting thing too, because the body has many perceptions. The body um, kind of uh, limits your perceptions in many ranges. Uh, this is uh, an analogy of what it feels like being in a body. Say these arms are kind of metal enclosure that limits your perceptions when you're in it you get a really fixed vision instead of uh, a 360 degrees one. Many physical sensations become those of a, of a body, of the body, and not your perceptions as a Thetan being the physical universe. Because the body is ruled by uh, the, a genetic entity, which has its own bank, um, and uh, we get lots of images and um, aberrations and all kinds of um, unwanted things that come from genetic entity and we have to somehow take them into account. Our mental abilities are really limited and uh, that, that happens because of the case of the body. We uh, have very limited speed with which we can move and we have really limited space that we can move around. However, if we get the Thetan exteriorized from this, say, from these arms, then the Thetan can really recover his or her abilities and uh, really handle his or her bank. And this is what the bridge of the 50s does. It gets the Thetan exteriorized and then it gets his um, case and his bank and all the stuff handled when the Thetan is exteriorized from the body. However, the problem was very few people could get exterior and um, not all problems can be handled when person is exterior. So these are the bridges that are widely known and they are delivered and there are many people who deliver them. Of course, there are uh, other bridges developed by some enthusiasts and some pioneers in the field, but they are less known. Any questions so far? Must be I'm really interested in hearing the viewpoints from you. Probably you know better or you know some other things that I don't. Uh, yeah, there is a compilation 
Maxim says there is a compilation of LRH's bridge up to OT8 and uh, Captain Bill's bridge up to OT16. Uh, it's all included into and combined into one bridge and it really works. I agree that this combination is uh, can really work and it has its advantages compared to uh, a single handed bridge. Any other questions or comments? Okay, let's move along. Now we come to the next part, which is the static and the, or the origin of games, tracks of games and evaluation of bridges. How can we evaluate a bridge? Before we start, let's talk on what is the uh, reason behind our games. If we look at the factors, if we read the factors, then we can see that before the beginning, there was a cause. And... Uh, can you read it, please? And the entire purpose of the cause for the creation of effect. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, okay. Aesthetic is something without mass, without wavelength, uh, without time, and actually without position. That's aesthetic, and uh, that is a definition of zero. Aesthetic, by definition, is something that is in a complete equilibrium. It isn't moving, and that's why we have used the word aesthetic. Uh, not in engineering sense, but in its absolute dictionary sense. Uh, third definition, the simplest thing there is aesthetic. But aesthetic is not nothingness. There are not, these are not synonyms. We speak of it carelessly as a nothingness. That's because uh, we say nothingness is in relationship to the space and objects of the material universe. Life has a quality, it has an ability. When we say nothingness, we simply mean it has no quantity. There is no quantity factor. Uh, axiom one, life is basically aesthetic. Definition, a life aesthetic has no mass, no motion, no wavelengths, no location in the space or in, the, or in time. It has the ability to postulate and perceive. The static is capable of considerations, postulates, and opinions. Uh, space, energy, object, form, and time are the result of considerations made and or agreed upon or not by the static and are perceived solely because the static considers that it can perceive them. <laughs> okay, so we can conclude, we can make a uh, conclusion that at the, in the beginning there was the cause and uh, we can make uh, we can take religions for example in christianity there is god who is actually the cause there are other religions like mayan or tao or some eastern ones and so we can see an analogy to scientology here in in uh, that in the beginning there was the source that caused uh, the uh, game field or game field the living unit we call in scientology a hidden uh, that been taken from the Greek letter theta. Theta, uh, the mathematics symbol used in Scientology to indicate the source of life and life itself. Definition two, uh, the awareness of awareness unity, which has all potentialities, but no mass, no wavelength, and no location. Uh, third definition, the being who is in the individual and who handles and lives in the body. Fourth definition, spirit. It is described in Scientology as having no mass, no wavelength, no energy, and no time or location in the space except by consideration or postulate. The spirit is not a thing, it is the creator of things. And 10th definition uh, from dictionary, aesthetic that can consider and can produce space and energy and objects. Now, this is the definition of a Thetan. We can see that Thetan is also static. Now, what's the difference between thetan and static? Now, to understand that, let's get back to the factors. A third, uh, third factor is uh, the first action of Venus is to assume a viewpoint. Now, let me draw you a picture. Okay, the easiest way to show is to start with the static. Now, that's the static. Now, these figures that I'm drawing are kind of statics, different um, units of static because there is no special, any special symbol for that. In one of the lectures, Ron told us there, that there were 10 multiplied by 10 in the 40th degree statics who entered the game. 
Now, the first thing they did to have a game, they created space. They created the universe. They postulated its, exi its existence. The first action of Venus is to assume a viewpoint. When statics created this universe, they created viewpoints to perceive the game using these viewpoints. These circles are viewpoints. <laughs> Every single statin uh, assumes a viewpoint. And just think about it. Each one of these statins is still static. However, what's the difference from the being static, from the state of static? Static has unlimited abilities. Static has no place in space, no position in space, but the Thetan does. Static has, has full knowledge of what is happening in tone 40. Thetan is below static on the tone scale and uh, he has his own viewpoint on what is happening. Often a Thetan is inside a body, especially if uh, Thetan degraded and uh, he cannot perceive without the body. And in this case, uh, Thetan considers himself a piece of mess and is actually positioned in mass universe. And for Thetan to leave the game, there is a bridge that uh, a Thetan can follow and which can get him into the state of static again. Many Thetans are dissatisfied with the condition and state that, have, that they have in the game currently. And those students who are less dissatisfied, they're searching and they fight Scientology and they find a way out. Now, this illustrates how a Thetan is also uh, a static, uh, but a Thetan is not a static in its full definition. A Thetan can reach the state of static using the bridge. And this is what this lecture is about. Any questions so far? So you do yeah, understand no what's the difference between the Thetan and the static? No questions, right? All right, let's go on. Вопрос, when the body dies, Thetan leaves the body. He becomes more or less static and more exteriorized from life. But Thetan has an aberration that he must have a body. He actually finds a body and continues to play using the body. Uh, that's why uh, before uh, Theta was born, it had more static to it. But it's not the complete static that one can achieve using a bridge. Yeah, there was a mm -hmm. question, what are statics? What are units of static that Mikhail talked about earlier? And actually, statics or units of static are uh, original players who entered the game and started to play it. It's the, uh, those uh, 10 multiplied by 10 and 40 degree players that Ron writes about probably in uh, lectures in Phoenix. This figure is actually very, it's up to one's viewpoint. You can actually make an, an evaluation with your emitter and you can get this number of players of static. Uh, the question was, um, how can static or units of static uh, be quantified in any way? They must be separate and uh, take a position in space, but the static cannot take a position in space. That's why it cannot be, it cannot exist in the form of separate units. That's the, a that's the question. Mikhail says basically that he does not insist on this number and uh, you can actually uh, get it right for yourself when you progress up the bridge and you can actually verify it using a meter. Uh, if you have ever seen uh, pictures taken by Hubble um, you probably saw that there are myriads and billions of stars and galaxies and a little, a little point on that photo can be actually lots of galaxies in one position. So for body, this seems limited, but for Thetan, for static, it's actually, it has no borders or limits whatsoever. Static is not limited by space. It actually does not need space to be. A question, which of the bridges that you described before you most agree with? All bridges are good, and it's up to you to decide which one you want to take. I will tell you further on how to evaluate bridges. Uh, a question, after uh, a certain completes the bridge, can he or she uh, finish, get finished with his or her reincarnations? Actually, no. A certain continues to play the same game, but we'll talk more on that further on. 
And uh, please remind me if I forget. Actually, it's very it's very interesting question how a person perceives the game after he or she completes the bridge. Uh, is certain a viewpoint or the observation point? Certain is actually an observation point, and he puts viewpoints to perceive. Uh, he puts uh, dimension. Uh, points. points of dimension. It puts points of dimension to perceive, right? Um, a question. Markabians or Thetans of other civilizations, can they also, um, are they also not able to play without bodies? Uh, actually, some of them can and some of them cannot. Um, the purpose of other civilizations sending uh, their, how we can say, missionaries or, I don't know, sending Thetans here is to gain control over planets, over this planet in particular. But this is not the uh, objective, the purpose of this lecture to talk on that. Uh, was static in the emotional state of boredom? Uh, because it created this game. No, actually, static cannot have any emotions, but it created emotions to make this game playable. Okay, let's move on. Okay, games tracks and bridges, evaluation okay. of bridges. Now, this now we are going to talk about how we can evaluate bridges based on their uh, effectiveness or efficiency. This is the time yeah, track. To the time. left, there is present time. Now, the first bridge, the book one bridge. This is where we discharge a certain period of uh, time track of a person in this life, and especially the prenatal periods. And uh, the uh, body uh, has less aberrations connected with that period. Next bridge is LRH's bridge. You probably heard that 75 million years ago, there was a catastrophe that uh, happened on this planet and the planets in near vicinity in this galaxy. The process that one used to discharge the uh, piece of case of the case associated with this catastrophe is called R6 or routine six. The case associated with uh, this catastrophe is called the R6 bank and it's the key bank that gets audited up to OT8. And uh, LRH bridge that we're talking about here the, at this point, it uh, really does discharge uh, everything related to this catastrophe from present time back to 75 million years ago and around that. If we get back to the evaluation of bridges, we can see that one of the main goals is uh, the uh, bridge to a better life. The person who follows this bridge will have his R6 bank really cleared really, really discharged. But sometimes it takes a lot of time, and I mean a lot. Um, this bridge um, helps discharge a certain parts of case, which is further than that, but actually it's devoted to discharging this period of time. If all entities, all patterns on this planet will concentrate on uh, discharging, handling this area, this catastrophe, then we will all get better life because the charge will get significantly less. That's LRH bridge, and it's the uh, games that this bridge handles, and it's the current bridge of the Church of Scientology. Those who left the church in the 70s or the 80s or 90s, this is the bridge that they are delivering. Next bridge is the Captain Bell's bridge up to OT16. This bridge handles every part of the case associated with MEST and it allows you to get out of MEST and act as a static. As you can see, it's, uh, it digs into cases very deep. Next part is Captain Bill's bridge up to OT48. Uh, this segment of the bridge, this part of the bridge deals with the axioms and the factors and logics and cues, pre-logics. Ideally, a bridge must work with axioms and factors and logics and cues. And this is what's included into Captain Bill's bridge up to OT48. I noticed that there is a games condition uh, with those who deliver these bridges. Uh, there is a term, a bubble of realities. A person who is doing some bridge is actually really sure about that bridge because he or she gets the wins on that bridge. 
Those who are on all righteous bridge, they uh, think that other bridges are squirrel bridges because uh, there are processes involved that LRH did not develop. Uh, those who are on Captain Bill's bridge up to OT48 wonder why should someone be so focused on that very little period of time because a Thetan can be freed up to a, a long, long time ago. Those who are on the LRH bridge, they dig very deeply into the R6 case and they really are into discharging that. Those who do Captain Bill's bridge up to OT48 uh, dig less into R6 bank. And as a result, they get bypass charge from that. Captain Bill spoke about handling that and ways to do that, but not all CSs agree that this is really necessary. So if you follow, if you do a certain bridge and you get your wins on that bridge, please continue to do what you're doing. So please continue to do the bridge you are doing, but if you feel you have some bypass charge, please contact your CS and then, get, then decide which bridge you want to take. After a person handles the uh, R6 bank, he or she becomes more or less static regarding their body. They do not get so influenced upon by the body. I heard someone say that he was static with uh, um, of 200 meters in diameter. After a person completes OT16, he or she becomes uh, gets beyond messed universe. Please remember the Hubble pictures. This is how one feels. Please Real remember universe. that what we can see in Hubble pictures is just pieces of galaxies around us, but the mass universe is immeasurable. Uh, next levels of static uh, is uh, the completion of OT48, where one becomes the, stat the source static. This is what Captain Bill wrote on uh, the source state. This brings one to OT48 plus or higher. The rest of the levels above that can be created by you if you have all the basics. Or all the bridge, sorry. Or all the basics. Like basics. The basic, basics. Basics, okay. Mm -hmm. When Bill was yeah, developing OT43, he was already talking about OT48. So he realized that there was way further than that. After I completed OT48, I was um, I had L rundowns and I got exterior on CS37. Something pushed me out of the universe that we have when we are OT48. I'm a practical man, I'm not uh, theorizing here. I had an engineering task put before me. I was wondering how can one uh, actually quickly and efficiently uh, move up bridge and get all the results коэффициента полезного действия или с большей эффективностью. Um, what's the uh, English for that? Yeah. Uh, one of the engineering goals is uh, to make something uh, working better or optimal. With best performance. Yeah. When I got exterior during that CS, uh, while making that CS, I was wondering what's up next because there was nothing. There was no bridge. And while I was talking to CSs, I realized they did not have that reality. Then I decided to try and see what Captain Bill would do if he were me, or if I were him. What CS would he issue to get that situation handled or work with it in any way? Uh, a way out of any universe is the uh, super static CS. This is what yep. uh, Captain Bill writes about. I applied this CS to the um, OT48 games and no, to, the, to my situation, and I started to see the OT48 games and I started to see further bridge. The rest of the case can be easily handled with the processes that we have uh, on OT9 to OT16. Now that's OT48 plus. I recorded a, a video briefing on that and I shared it with my friends. Some of them who were lower on the bridge said that they got exterior and they had the same experience. Those who Stay watched up. my briefing said that uh, the CSs were working and they got the same results as I did. 
So what's there? What's, uh, what's on this level? This is the level where we go to the next level of static. Before we enter uh, the games universe, doing... and uh, while we are going down, we make a lot of agreements to play the game. Uh, it was interesting for me that those agreements were the, the, the dynamics. Those agreements were to have an obsessive or compulsive um, uh, intention, compulsive um, drive to play the game. You cannot not play it. And the game becomes even more solid than it was before. According to that briefing, you have to find a twin. And if that twin does not suit you in any way, you have to find a new twin who is the best match for you. And it reminds us, reminds us of the second dynamic. There were many directions and policies and instructions to follow before you agree to get into the game. And after I have handled this game, I try to apply this technology to the next levels. Uh, and it really worked. I got the new level of freedom. What do we get when we complete OT48? Remember, there was a question, what do we, what person gets when he uh, completes OT48? When I was OT48, I was thinking, okay, what's the next life that I, would, that I want to live? What's the family that I, want, that I want to have? Where do I want to be born next life? Yeah, but... I had a feeling that I can easily leave the body and take a new one. So I, made, um, I mocked up uh, my parents and say um, wealthy people, wealthy and educated, and instantly I got uh, a location in my mind, say Germany. It was a certain and real point, a certain and real family where I could take a body if I wanted to. Then I was thinking, what if I want to take to have a creative profession? What would be the best for me? And I got an image from Poland. It was clearly marked as Poland. It was like a game, a playing a game in a computer. Um, I was changing certain parameters and I instantly got new points with certain and real locations and certain and real people. When I completed OT48 plus or OT49, I tried to concentrate on who, who I want to be next life and what family I want to be born into. And the answer was, I did not need a body. I realized I do not need a body to play games. Okay, I hope it answers that. Any new questions? Uh, what's the period of time that the bridge to OT48 takes, takes up? Okay. Time uh, is that... what is inside Mest Universe. Beyond OT16, there is no time. And there are other parameters and other factors that the um, progress of the game can be measured in. What's the... Um, Okay, on that picture that Mikhail was drawing, what's, where is the, where can one uh, get solo auditing uh, in a quality time and in correct manner and get the right result? Uh, okay, it's grade four and Dynetics and solo. That's the prerequisite. That's the prerequisite. I'm sorry. Why cannot a static that completed OT48 uh, not postulate and change um, physical objects, like moving walls, as LRH wrote in PDC lectures? That's a really interesting question, because a bridge does not teach you how to move mess around. I know some people whose PCs really get some results and some success in telekinesis. But the goal of the bridge, the purpose of the bridge, is to free and release Thetan and Theta. A bridge and processing itself is for Thetan to play better games, and um, to, for Thetan to get a better ability to play games. If someone teaches you to move physical objects around by okay. postulates or levitate, it's, not, it's a no games condition. Nobody would want to play with that person they would probably want to take him out of the game. That's why there are no drills on the bridge regarding you know, moving physical objects around and messing with energy or space or telepathy. By the rules of this game, we control uh, mess by controlling bodies. And we do not, do not use our theta abilities to do that. 
If you want to move a wall, you go and you apply your communication skills and you get some exchange in. And the people who are specially trained to do that and are professionals, they move walls for you. This is the way that we are currently playing this game. Okay, the next question is, uh, where on that drawing, where on that picture can I control my body and um, make it levitate? There is no level on the bridge where you can be taught to levitate. So if you find yourself in a situation where you want to levitate, it means that there is something wrong with your admin or your ethics. Say you went into some uh, highly criminal district and somebody hits you on the head. That means you misevaluated the situation. You put your body in danger. So you want to, you may want to complete this danger condition and move up higher up the conditions and next time not take your body into locations where it can be damaged. So next question is, um, uh, please remember that Mikhail told us uh, about his uh, realization that he does not need a body to play games. Yeah, that's right. You can play games as a static. Okay, next question. Uh, it looks like a Thetan can only reincarnate on the Earth, on planet Earth. That's true for an aberrated Thetan. Thetan. They can only reincarnate on planet Earth. But after OT8, a Thetan can reincarnate on any planet of his choice. But the game here is most interesting, you know. So is there, is there a necessity to leave Earth? And the number of bridges that we have, they can only be delivered on planet Earth at the moment. Next question. Are games, uh, is there an endless number of games? Uh, was it found out after OT49? That's an interesting game. And now Mikhail is going to draw another picture. Okay, that's games inside uh, OT48. I wanted to know what's even further than that and how can that be um, somehow looked at and handled. I tried not to enforce it. Uh, it's just that if I had my attention on some part of that case, I tried to do something with it. And if I did not have any attention on any part of the case, so I was just doing my usual business. Some guys I know finished OT uh, 49 and OT 50 and tried to go in even further than that. In two years, I went through 16 levels and reached OT 44, uh, 64. And this last level became felt transparent to me, like a very, very thin layer of plastic. It's like a child is putting on a plastic bag and tries to tear it to get out. This is, I, I did something like that. I tried to analyze what that was and why it was necessary. Uh, during the next two years, my attention was still somewhere inside these games. I started to have He's some still. body somatics and I started to handle the, the somatics as a part of the body case. Probably some of you uh, has, has, have has, <laughs> has had a diving experience. When a person dives really deep into the water, little bubbles of nitrogen get dissolved in his blood. The, the nitrogen is from the gas that they breathe while diving. And so when they yeah, are just... getting up to the surface of the water from the depth, they have to make uh, decompression stops. And this, this is when uh, nitrogen gets back from your lungs. And uh, if the divers don't do that, they uh, get this decompression symptoms when the nitrogen just boils in your blood, in their blood. And when the person gets to OT64, they have to make these little decompression stops to get rid of the charge that gets accumulated in the body. The uh, solidity, the mass of the charge becomes so tangible, the external pressure becomes less. And so these little parts of case kind of boil and you have to handle them. Otherwise, the body may get sick. Captain Bill mentioned it uh, in, the, uh, in his earlier uh, materials on the bridge. So it took me two years to get beyond this universe into this space. I was recovering the heaviness of my body. 
And as a result of that, I got this feeling of endless freedom. This is the state where you don't need games to play and uh, you have no limits. You get back little pieces of theta that you as a static threw around while playing games and they fill you up and you were just enjoying this being in the flow of the game of being. So what was it in terms of games? These uh, the levels. Is Static cannot become solid in a moment. When a person is taught to dive, uh, they have to put their head, their face into the water, just two, two or three centimeters deep. And they start to confront being there. Then they go down one meter, then three meters, then five, and so on. This is static diving into the game. This last level is really thin and you can get out of it easily. Uh, previous levels are very um, are more and more solid and there are more and more rules and instructions. And uh, finally, one reaches the level of OT48, the current game. Okay, uh, so this game that we have is binary, it's dual, and you probably saw this in yang symbol and it really demonstrates that. So the games of OT48 and below that are really solid. There is um, conflict, there is dynamics and opposition. And what's above that? It's uh, each level gets more and more easy and uh, transparent and it gets you to static. Uh, to put it technically, static uh, trains introversion on these levels. So a static gets more and more introverted and uh, it gets into maximum restrict. It, it uh, assumes maximum restrictions and it gets to where we are now, the current game of OT48. To play these games, a static must get really introverted and it must agree with uh, every rules and directions that it's given. These levels are relatively easy, but one must do it quickly because um, some things may happen. And I, I have a feeling that something happened to Bill Robertson who got somewhere, somewhere there. A little advice, little piece of advice from me, the tech use on OT42 can be used here to handle this. It's for those who did not see my briefings. Is there anything above OT64? In any games, there is a possibility that the game may, may become a trap for Theta. So a multi-universe is a way to protect Theta. 10 multiplied by 10 in 40 degree games was made to do that. And we put our attention there into this number, this number of games. If one of the games becomes a trap, then those who are in other games, and please remember how many there are, they can use their exterior rise attention and handle it. The same was made in OT48, a means to protect the games. You probably heard scientists say that there, that there is an unlimited number of universes that are similar to ours. And they uh, speak really on the concept of a multi-universe, multiverse. So they kind of use applied theory and got to that, but I practiced it and I saw it. So there's probably 64 plus, but I can't see anything beyond that. So probably that's the original static state that can be achieved on the bridge. Oh, the maximum static state. Oh, the maximum, okay. Okay, okay. is it clear so far? Any questions? Uh, so I, I hope I did not stimulate anyone, but that's probably just a piece of, um, information for you to consider because pr probably it's time for it to be heard and be handled. So just because you are attending this lecture, probably that's the bridge you may want to do. Uh, questions Mikhail, now? you ask open. Uh, Mikhail, have you experienced um, uh, removing other threatens of your physical body? And Mikhail said that any OT3 can do that. It's uh, described in the book History of Man by L.R.H. Uh, what does a person feel at the, at the end of each bridge that you described? They yeah. feel more freedom and more, more awareness. Uh, when Mikhail speaks of OT8, he means OT8 by Captain Bill. 
uh, I had an experience, I had experience getting out of my body and I could find all the answers and I could speak all languages. Does anything of that kind happen on OT48? We do not get exterior out of the body on Captain Bill's bridge. We can uh, expand beyond the body and deal with mist. Because the central observation point is positioned in the body, the body puts its own restrictions on its perceptions. Uh, as for me, I could not speak all languages on that level, but I felt that I knew some languages that do not even exist on the earth. Maybe there was some galactic language. Okay, next question. There is a compulsory uh, condition to play. Uh, it, and it's also compulsory to have a twin. But what happens if you don't? What if you don't have, take a twin? Um, let's put it this way. If you take a look at someone who is single, uh, who does not have any second dynamic, uh, well, he's, he or she is regarded as um, that something's wrong with them. If you take thetans or statics um, without bodies, then, uh, then you can see that they have a certain kind of second dynamic, but it's not sex, it's friendship, it's close relationship, it's wavelength. Uh, next question, what uh, free zone org Mikhail is in? Uh, my wife and me, we have our own org, it's called Estera, and we got uh, trained in one's org. But now my CS is uh, Marion Hagen, and I'm developing and going doing my own levels. Uh, speaking of training. Okay, next question. Is the current situation on planet Earth uh, a trap? Okay, in terms of planet Earth, it is a trap, and it's perceived as a trap. But actually, a static cannot be caught in a trap. I have an old friend who once shared an interesting story. He said, I spent uh, a billion years uh, in a stone as a Saturn. So if something happens on this planet, um, I don't know, life ends or all life forms die or something, then probably in a billion years, somebody will free me from that stone. So it's up to you whether to perceive it as a trap or as a possibility to handle the situations in the future. Or you can pretend to be a stone or a rock and not do anything about it. Okay, next question. Evolution is the task for all humanity to get out of games and traps. And after that, they can start creating the games, high games, uh, where there will be development. There is a data from Ron. We postulate first, and then we perceive. What we have now is what we postulated a long, long time ago, billions and trillions of years ago. And now we're experiencing and perceiving what we once postulated. So now we are just perceiving our own postulates and our task is to go through them and not get really worried about that. Uh, Lucia написала, if some I am so enjoyed that feeling of I knew it. Thank you so much. Следующий. In practical terms, how can we approach this bridge? How much is solo? How much do you need an auditor? How many CDs are there? Yes, what yes, are yes, the okay. prices? I deliver this bridge to those who completed OT48. My prices are not that high. So if you completed OT48, please contact me. Uh, next question. Can thetans with a higher C to one another in a second dynamic in one of the past lives meet again and communicate? Yes, yes, of course they can. I met people like that. I met people who loved each other in their past lives and it's really interesting. It's an interesting story. Uh, next question. Once during a simple assist, I got a cognition that I, uh, that I am free and have always been free. And it was very, it felt ridiculous at the moment. And I felt that I am kind of deceiving myself in, in terms of the necessity uh, of the bridge. Can someone freely play this game and not need uh, the state of freedom that you described? In one of the lectures, Captain Bill wrote that people used uh, the tech of the 50s and reached higher uh, states of existence. However, it's not standard tech. It means it uh, cannot be applied 100% to every person and 100% um, 
and let him have 100% good results each time. Okay, next, qu next question is, auditing is the postulate of um, all players and static uh, getting out of the game. That means that all fattens, that all fattens have uh, original knowledge of auditing. They just forgot about it. Yes, that's right. Auditing is the tech for all fattens to exit the game and take their abilities and create a new game or no game at all. Uh, can one postulate with awareness or without awareness? Yes, sometimes it happens. Um, for example, a person can uh, assume postulates from an implant while being unaware of it and postulate it while still being unaware. Next uh, Is omniprocessing something separate from the bridge or a way to enhance our advance in them? Omniprocessing was developed while doing that uh, portion of the bridge up to OT46, uh, for 64. Uh, it's where there is lots of bypass charge and if one does not handle it, the body may become sick. Uh, Omni is basically an agreement that we made with our friends. Uh, it's about if someone gets into a bad situation or something bad happens to them, others uh, can help him get out of it and handle it. And now we can use Omni processing to move quickly up the bridge. Uh, my first education, my first higher education is that of an engineer. My second education is that of an auditor and a CS. Let's uh, just not talk about <coughs> my other education, the other, other education that I have. The goal of an engineer is to create new optimized product. So when I saw what Omni can do, I, tr I wanted to apply it and see how it works with uh, auditing. First, I tried it on my friends who were games masters in higher. That's OT17 and, and above. Then OT8 and above. And then I tried it on my PCs, and my PCs got marvelous results from Omni processing. Uh, I do not insist on everybody doing it. But it's an excellent product, and uh, it can work for the grades and the uh, NED and dynamic rundowns and other processes. Now a group of uh, Russians, about 10, 10 people, they uh, completed RC straight wire and CS53 in a green form using Omni. And I saw that PCs, when they're doing it, they can really uh, dig into it. And sometimes they dig even deeper than, than uh, they can do with an auditor. So the next part of the lecture is about Omni processing as uh, ideal processing. But we'll get back to it. Let's look at uh, other questions. A question, if uh, an implant is created against the will of uh, the being, of a being, then it means that the game is created um, not only according to the will of the fetten. A game was created uh, along the postulate that we all made and agreed with. If you spent a long time somewhere in a coastal resort, at some point, you realize that you have gotten so bored of just lying there on the beach and going to the restaurant and sunbathing and swimming. You just get bored. So a game is um, designed for it to include not only good moments. You can um, develop your ethical skills and technical skills and admin skills in the game. And that's the way for you to avoid the pain that's in there. And yes, we postulated like this. We postulated it to have implants too. Okay, next question. Is the following game being postulated right now? It is only possible when we have played this game to the end because we are now yeah. we are currently playing this game. So we cannot postulate next one. A bridge is the way for everybody to finish the game. Okay, next question. I have a friend who did not who has not done Scientology this life, but he remembers a lot about reincarnations and games without bodies. Is it possible that he could have studied in the classroom of LRH or CDR, but uh, this part of his memory is somehow obscured? Yes, it's possible. Okay, next question. Mikhail, when you reached final results, did you get the knowledge of what created the static? 
what created the static or static is the result and the truth. As Ron said, static is absolute truth. Yeah. So um, we, we cannot ask what creates static because static is the truth. Um, next question, what's the role of an implant? An implant is the restriction of the is a restriction of abilities. And those who do implants, they are trying to gain control over beings. And who are saints? Are they the people who the, the beings who reached st the static state? Well, certainly these are the people who got certain abilities and they could use them. But what's interesting that uh, all of us, all of us who are attending this lecture, we can use our abilities and we can treat people like as if we were saints using Omni. Okay, следующий uh, вопрос. Lucia, uh, could we say that static is the eighth dynamic? Somehow, yes. Next, next question. Am I correct that if we started using uh, auditing, uh, that means we have started to uh, uncreate. Uh, uncreate all of the game, all this game? Yes, it's true. Next question. Uh, does implant control exist currently? Yes, you can read yes, about it in book sector nine. Is the creation of static and if static uh, as is, is it, it start, stops to exist. This conclusion uh, that follows from the axioms is so easy that relatively few people try to use it. Because most of the people who are attending this lecture know what omniprocessing is. I'm not going to read the definition of concept because all of you know that concept is a thought and uh, there is nothing, no additional thinking to it. To control static, you have to assume tone 40. Our task is to contact the static and uh, make it as is what, and uncreate what we have in our case. All we have to do is to find a mental mass that we have in our mind or in our body. It can be a mis-emotion or a charge or just uh, a pressure that you don't like in any part of your body. Uh, you having that mass is the result of a gigantic number of postulates of all static, of all units of static. All you have to do is to draw the attention of these units of static to that mass for it to disappear. Let's try and do this now. Find a mass or miss emotion in your body, in your, in your case. Locate it and define its form. Contact the static and intend it, intend for it to uncreate this mass. It happens instantly. Everybody did it? Difficult for anyone? I think most of you did it. It's the simplest proof that Scientology axioms work. There is no need to introduce any additional terms like Omni. Just apply it and it works. Uh, when we apply the term Omni, we get more data on how it works. This Omni operation state was agreed upon by all players in the original source state and the right to do it was also agreed and given to any player while in the games. So any one of us, anyone can use this to improve the condition of his or her case. Uh, to get into the Omni state, you only need to expand to go beyond the uh, messed universe. And those who did the TRs well, TR0, they can do it easily. Now let's look at types of auditing that we have. First one is auditing with an auditor. There are two terminals involved, and one of them is the auditor, and uh, he or she helps the PC to handle uh, mental masters and charge. There is also solo processing. This is where Thetan draws his or her attention to the somatic to uncreate the somatic or yes. mental mass. And there is omni processing where Thetan intends that uh, other uh, units of static. Um, uncreated uh, his or her somatic or mental mass. Uh, in physics, there is the lever principle. You can use a little um, load and a big distance to lift a heavy load. So in Omni, we're using the lever of 10 multiplied by 10 in the 40th degree units of static to uncreate mass. And as a result, mental masses disappear instantly. Often, 
people um, do, while doing omni processing uh, get into solo processing and they're trying to look at mental mass as, uh, themselves. That's the reason why some of the people who are trying to do the omni processing do not get results. They start to look at somatic somasses themselves instead of intending statics to that. Uh, there is a dual processing, which is uh, the standard processing. There's an auditor in the PC who look at the PC's bank. There is solo processing where the uh, pre-OT and his or her CS are bigger than the bank. And there is omni processing where PC plus omni plus the tech of clearing are bigger than the bank. This is a table uh, that, this is a chart that shows us the difference between various types of processing by uh, different criteria. For example, uh, uh, dual processing where there is an auditor and a PC involved is the most expensive procedure. When the person is uh, flying solo, uh, the price only consists of case supervising fees and uh, the cost of the training. With omni processing, the only thing you pay for is the introductory course, and uh, it allows you to apply it and get quick results. The quality of the processing really uh, depends on the auditor. The quality of solo processing depends on the level of training and the awareness of the solo auditor and also the CS and his or her training. With omni processing, uh, if the PC has uh, succeeded in training and really grasped the procedure, the result is, is perfect each time. Omni processing allows for the deepest possible handling of the case. Uh, we experimented with uh, people who are high on the CBR's bridge, and uh, they got really great results doing uh, processes of the lower bridge using Omni. Processes like uh, date and location and listening and nulling are um, unachievable with solo processing. Oh, sorry, date and location are achievable, is, is achievable. But all types of processes are, avail uh, are achievable during uh, omni processing. One of the results of omni processing, which is uh, very important, is that there is very little or no bypass charge. And if there is one, it can be easily handled. With uh, dual processing, uh, PC really depends on the auditor and the CS and the ethic officer. And this uh, dependency is what made the Church of Scientology a monster. Uh, the Church of Scientology brings people very close to slavery. And it manipulates the availability of the bridge. With Omni, one only gets instructions and he writes reports and makes sessions, goes in sessions, and uh, they do not depend on the CS or anyone, to some degree, of course. No sec checks are required as they are very, they, they, they are constantly done in the Church of Scientology. One does not have to constantly search for bypass charge. If competent, if the uh, Omni processing auditor is competent, they can feel this charge and they can easily handle it or yeah. have it handled easily. On January 16, uh, at 11 o'clock Moscow, we start the introductory course on uh, Omni Processing Life Repair. If you have wins and achievements and you are satisfied with your experience with auditing in your org, then uh, you do not have to attend the course. This course has already been delivered, and there is a recording, a video recording of it in English language. Those who are interested in uh, omni processing and the introductory course will get links to that. Any questions on the lecture? Is it okay to ask uh, Omni uh, to uncreate a mass of somebody else? And Mikhail says, yes, it's possible, but you have to have uh, most of your case handled. And uh, it's, his recommendation is not to interfere a lot into cases of other people. For those of you who did not do well while we were doing the drill on Omni earlier, uh, sometimes, um, well, well, the statistics shows that um, about half of the people can't do it uh, instantly, but it takes training, it takes drilling, and uh, probably you have to uh, get uh, some parts of your case handled before you can actually do that.
If you're interested in the course, in the introductory course in omniprocessing, there is a link in the chat box and you can ask your questions by email. Uh, next question. If one practices omniprocessing, how can they define where they are on the bridge uh, in terms of the case or uh, there is no progress on the bridge with Omni? Can one achieve the state of clear and OT using Omni? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, the, the group of 10 people who did that, uh, of them, five became clear by uh, doing straight wire and, um, sorry, Misha, what was that? ARC straight wire and? Life repair. And life repair, yeah, with Omni. Uh, but basically, it is possible to become clear using Omni, but uh, you, sh you might need a CS for that. Um, but I know someone who was actually just doing simple things like locating mass and uh, uncreating it uh, by Omni, and uh, he became clear like that. And I know some OTs who uh, did Excalibur using Omni, uh, but the Omni tech must be uh, verified for OT2, but we will see. We'll see, we are experimenting right now. What does Omni mean? Omni from Latin means all, all of them. Возможно, вы слышали, что есть такие имитации, там, ом, там, вот, у буддистов. Вот, это один из способов настроиться на, вот, на это состояние. Probably you heard about ом meditations that Buddhists do. So that's one of the ways to get into the ом state. This state is known in many religions. Uh, next question. Can anyone, uh, can any person um, start auditing with Omni? Uh, if that person completed the introductory course and then uh, and uh, they can hand, they can have their charge handled using Omni and uh, after they completed the self analysis uh, briefing on Omni, so that's fine. They can do that, regardless of the case level. Are you posting this webinar recording to YouTube? Yes, next week. Will be an Omni book. And course must be completed. Uh, yes, Mikhail wants to start that course in a couple of weeks. Uh, yes, uh, it's good. Uh, three webinars, three Omni webinars. Uh, book one is going to be enough for a person to become clear in the prenatal area. Uh, can I watch the recording of this conference somewhere? Yes, all recordings will be available, but those uh, where the lecturer did not give express permission to post that. And we don't have permissions from Janice Grady and Sylvia Steiner. What's the price of the life repair with Omni? It's 8,000 rubles uh, and the course comprises of uh, eight webinars. If you want to have uh, personal and private sessions, please contact me. Don't you, uh, don't you get bored on this planet being OT64? Not now, not yet. Uh, next question, next comment. This processing uh, reminds me of um, contacting gods, concentrating on a problem and um, asking them to look at it and help. Yes, it's very much like that. Uh, for example, early Christians, they could treat people easily and heal them, and they did it uh, instantly, and they know they knew how to use Stone 40. If one assumes Stone 40 and asks God to heal him or, I don't know, uncreate something, this really happens, and mental masses disappear. There are stories of really small troops that uh, conquered uh, big... Um, uh, big battalions, and they really uh, made their way, and that's because they assumed tone 40. Okay, any other questions? Okay, no more questions. A question, can I use a video recording and uh, practice Omni by myself? And Mikhail says, yes, it's possible, and people who do that, they really get marvelous results, but working in a group is really interesting because you can share your stories, and uh, this group dynamic, it really helps you. Okay, thank you for attending this lecture, this conference. If you want to attend the course, the introductory course in Omni Life Repair, you can register. If you want to support uh, Theta Flow materially, these are the details. We will be happy to receive anybody's help.
Всем пока, до следующей конференции. Спасибо. 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 Спасибо.